Hello, Professor Ramesh and my friend. Today, I will introduce you how to reduce the impacts of industrial animal agriculture on climate change. Our group is group number four. Here is our name list. So to begin, I will explain to you what is the problem and what we need to fix. Animal agriculture is the second largest contributor to human-made greenhouse gases. Emissions after fossil fuels is a leading cause of deforestation water and air pollution and biodiversity loss. Many of Earth's um, precious land, water, and energy resources are pressed by animal agriculture in order to accommodate the 70 billion animal increase annually for human consumption, a third of planet's ice-free land surface, as well as nearly 16% of global fresh water is devoted to growing livestock. Moreover, a third worldwide grain product is used to feed um, livestock. Cattle are the biggest source of emission from animal agriculture. In one recent study showing that an average American diet beef consumption creates 1,984 pounds of carbon dioxide equivalent annually, replacing beef with plants would reduce the number of 96%, bringing it down to just 73 pounds of carbon dioxide equivalent. Methane release from enteric fermentation and particularly from animal manure. Loss of carbon store in the forest and soils from land use change and degradation fossil fuels burn to produce mineral fertilizers for feed production. Most of the greenhouse gases emissions comes from three things. The first thing is methane, obviously is on the slide. As you can see in this chart, it definitely shows that the global meat production continues to rise up. Consequently, the greenhouse gases will go up too, which is a very bad thing for our Earth that we should stop it. So let's talk about the solutions on how to reduce the impacts of animal agriculture on climate change. So these are a couple things that should happen. The first one is sustainable animal agriculture. Farmers can follow these couple practices in order to make their farms more sustainable. So they can raise more regional species. These species are more adapted to the local environment so they can produce more yields. Uh, they can farm organically. So reusing and recycling everything that they can, or they can feed the animals, the things that human cannot eat. So for example, in case of cows, they can feed them grass, silage, and hay, so that all of the grains that are usually used to feed cows and go to humans, so there is less grain production overall. Here's an example of a sustainable farm. It's called the Bean Hollow Grass-Fed Farm. It is located in the United States. So in this farm, cows and sheep are put together because they graze on different kinds of vegetation. This diversity helps control diseases, control parasites. It also increases productivity and it also improves pasture. The last thing is carbon taxing and carbon labeling on meat. So these are the things that the government can do or the NGOs can do. For carbon taxing, we can raise the price of meat depending on the type, the cut, and the amount that you're buying. And in case of carbon labeling, we can make something similar to a nutritional value sticker that says how much carbon has to be produced in order for that piece of meat to reach the consumer or the buyer. Now, those were things that you can't really do by yourself. You have to ask the farmers to do it. You have to ask the government or NGOs to do it. What can you do as an individual? To put it very easily, you should eat less meat or go completely vegan. Reducing meat consumption is key to our solution as it could decrease meat production, which lead to less animal agriculture due to the reduced demand for meat. Now, there is no need for you to go completely vegan. It would be best for you to completely cut out meat from your diet, but just eating less meat would be enough. So the picture on the left is a dish called Nikujaga. It's a Japanese dish where most of the ingredients are vegetables. There are only a couple slices of meat in it. So that's one way that you can reduce your meat consumption. 
Now the picture on the right is called sweet potato and mushroom cannellini with braised egg roll with butter beans. It's basically sweet potato and mushroom rolls, and that's an example vegan dish that you can try. Another way for you to decrease your meat consumption is by having a no meat meal or a no meat day or really any frequencies that you're comfortable with. Uh, but let's try to keep it at once a week, for the least. The key here is not intensity; it's consistency. So being able to skip a meat meal every week for a very long time would be so much better than skipping meat for three days a week and then quitting after two weeks. Because we're trying to look for the long-term effect here. Finally, if you're interested in becoming completely vegan, you can also use meat alternatives. You have two choices here. You can use fake meat. So they are plant-based meat. They are made to taste like meat, but they're actually not made of meat. Or you can use ingredients that have the rich flavor that is usually associated with meat. For example, mushrooms in your cooking. Now you might be thinking, "Wait, I really want to start eating less meat, but I have no idea where to start." So we have made a compilation of recipes that don't use a lot of meat or no meat at all in order to start. Your reduced meat diet. And that is everything that we have to present. Thank you for listening.